Hello everybody and welcome to another KO review. Thanks to the guys at TF Direct. Today we're looking at the latest offering from Wei Zhang as part of their Robot Force Headmasters line, the Chief Army. This is Z-Huge Fighter or Z-Huge Fighter or Z-Huge, uh, however that is pronounced, I have no idea. It is of course an oversized version of Brainstorm. Quick look at the back of the box. We've got him in his bot mode, his vehicle mode. We see other figures in the line and of course his head deformation. And here we have him out of his plastic prison. He is by far one of my favorite of this oversized line. There's just something about him. He looks really clean and very reminiscent of his G1 counterpart. Now I didn't own the original. I believe it was a Walgreens exclusive, uh, so we had to pay a little bit extra purchasing it here in the UK through importers. But yes, this is the third of the Autobot Headmasters. We're still waiting for Chrome Dome to finish the original four. Uh, he comes with two of these blasters and this rather nice large shield. Now, before I get on to taking a good look at Brainstorm, when I reviewed Highbrow, I put the question out there, are these heads the same size as the original Headmasters? And the general consensus was yes. Now I have since been rummaging through all of my old Transformer stuff and I found the old Junkian Blacksmith version of Optimus Prime as a Headmaster. Now age has not been very kind to him and his joints are somewhat loose, but in essence he is still the same size as a Generation 1 Headmaster. Now they're not exactly the same size, he is a fraction shorter, kind of comes up to the shoulders of the regular Headmasters, but that being said, that's not hugely off, that's not bad at all. Now unfortunately the original Headmaster system had these large shoulder pieces which slid down, they're, these are the ones which changed the reading on the tech specs. The head, however, is pretty much an identical size. So, in theory, hopefully you guys can help me out here by attaching photos to the comments section below or uploading them to my Facebook page. These heads should work well with the original Headmasters. I always thought the G1 heads looked slightly too large for the G1 bodies. You know what these heads look like mounted on those G1 bodies. Now, nostalgia aside, let's take a look at how good Brainstorm is. Uh, my first thing I notice is the instructions have these wings around the other way. I don't know if these can just pop out or whether they're pinned. I believe we can just pop these out. They're meant to be mounted like this. It's not the end of the world. Shouldn't really have to do that, but it's a very small price to pay. There we go. They're what they're meant to look like. They're meant to be clean, like so. But yes, here we have him. Probably one of my favorites thus far. We have articulation going down, up, left, right, and somewhat quizzical there. It's all based on the head connection from the headmaster. The shoulders, friction joints up and around. We can come up to the side. We have a rotation on the upper bicep. We have a bend on the elbow. The fin sections can be brought to the back if you want a more streamlined look for him. Let's just remove his shield. I've pulled that out to the side because we do have rotation there on the wrists. Uh, the screws they've used are somewhat unsightly in my opinion and leave a little bit to be desired as does the hollow forearms. The waist can rotate. We can have the legs come forwards and backwards and out to the side on a soft ratchet. We have a rotation at the thigh. We have a friction joint on the knee and friction joint on that knee. I would have liked some ratchet joints on those knees. It's actually quite surprising they haven't incorporated ratchet joints. Uh, but each their own, we do have a die cast toes which go up and down. 
And again, we don't have any ankle pivot because this is based on a deluxe figure. They've done minimal work to get this up to scale. Let me know if they've added any articulation. Is anything different articulation wise with this figure? Because apparently the original highbrow, his rotors didn't fold in on a lot of people's figures. Now mine, I believe was a pre-production run. His did bend, uh, there was no doubt about that. Uh, but a lot of people were saying that their Hasbro versions, his rotors, didn't bend at all. I'm just thinking that maybe that's something they stopped for production runs uh, due to QC or fear of breakage. Uh, yeah, but mine did it. But the Wei Zhang did it a lot smoother. Um, everything else is sculpted. Very nice detailing on this guy. A lot of clean areas as well as some intricate detailing and kind of circuitry on the back there. But all in all, the figure brings back those 80 feels that I've been missing. Uh, we do have a die cast here on the crotch, hence the difference in shade as well. I, I just love, love the head. That's a really good head sculpt. Now, of course, we can hold both of the weapons. Um, I do like what they did with the uh, nose cone, actually, making it into a shield. That was a that was a nice idea. I would have liked more range on these arms. You can't really bring them out to the side without having it unnaturally go above the head. But there's definitely enough movement on this figure to get some nice dynamic posing. And for the peaceful brainy type, he doesn't half look badass. And here he is with his comrade in arms. They do look very good together, don't they? And I'm glad we don't have an absolutely massive Wei Zhang kind of robot force symbol like we do on these two. It's a far more discreet <laughs> brainstorm. Uh, I really like how they all look. Uh, I like how they're different scales as well. They're not all exactly the same size. and That works for me. And here they are alongside some more generation style figures. We've got the likes of the Kubenbau Drift, we've got Springer at the back there. And of course, we have Rover over on this side. They're all a pretty good scale. That's definitely where they're aimed at, I think, rather than the masterpiece line. These are definitely more kind of generation classics. And being a good Voyager scale, you can't really go wrong, especially for the price. Now, the only thing I think is really missing from Brainstorm is his briefcase. So if anybody wants to make one of those on Shakebase and send that over, I'd be uh, eternally grateful. <laughs> all right, let's get Brainstorm transformed up into his vehicle mode. First of all, we need to remove the head. Now, the head on Brainstorm does get really stuck. Not entirely sure why. I think it's these kind of grooves on the side of his head. They kind of really grip onto the side. That's a very derpy looking face. Probably one of the worst face sculpts of the three. It's just not carried over very well in my opinion. It kind of reminds me of the, the Mattel Muscle Men. That sort of face. Uh, but yes, we do have a little bit of articulation on these. As previously stated, the head is ball mounted. And if we just untab these arms, there we go. We can move those out slightly to the side. It's nothing overly amazing. Uh, the legs can move forward and bend at the knees. So we does sit in a very nice sitting position, but we do have a very exposed mask on the back. I would have liked a flap or something, much like we got with the older versions or the junkie on blacksmith ones. They just had a little flap that folded over and hid the face. Right, to start the transformation, you want to lift the arms up. We've got these covers, and on the underside here, we can flip those around, and there's a small tab here that's just gonna plug in to the underside of the fist, locking those into place. You wanna push the die cast toes upwards, open up these legs. There's a fin, which can be flipped through, and these two sections just push and tab in together at three points, the toughest being the one that pins in to the side of this fin. But if you just work it in, it does successfully follow suit. Uh, we can then bend these legs up and over, and that's going to collapse down onto that crotch area. Now, as standard, 
it comes with this back piece detached. Uh, all you have to do is just slide that in to those grooves and push that all the way in. That can now be stored either like this in robot mode, or of course we can use it as a shield like we did earlier on. Now you want to lift this piece up. This tab is gonna come all the way up and over, and there's these two tabs here. They're going to correspond with those holes, and that's going to line up like so. Close off these leg pieces, bringing them both into the center and tabbing those in. You can then pull on this arm piece, untabbing it from the inside of that chest area, bring this all the way down. As we bring it down, there is a tab on here that's gonna tab in to the arm, and there's a circular tab here that's gonna tab in just below the fist, line both of those up and give that a push and a squeeze and this will tab in nicely. And then we can bring in those weapons and just pop those in to the side like that. Personally, my cockpit section is very, very tight. The gap between here is very minimal and it's not an overly amazing fit. So just lift that up, you can then lift this piece up, which does have a very nice sculpted section there for an Autobot logo. Bring this up and then we can put our pilot in. That's actually a very nice dashboard section in there. We pop him in, make his arms a little bit more narrow. And then this can just come down like that. Uh, very much reminds me of a sand speeder and something like that but all in all that's a really good homage to the g1 counterpart uh, we do have this piece here which can be lifted up when we turn this into a vehicle on its own and i believe they used this for blur as well didn't they uh, so i don't know if they used this piece in his uh, transformation at all or whether he used it as part of his vehicle mode but we do have uh, this wheel at the front and these two wheels here which means he can kind of roll. So here we have them all together. Three of the four headmasters. Honestly, cannot wait for Chrome Dome. He is easily my most anticipated. I love what they're doing here. Honestly believe this is the size that Hasbro should have done them in the first place. But uh, as you all know, that's not always the case and not always possible for these companies to tick every box for every fan. But personally, I like how these all look together. I like that they're not all exactly the same size and they do have a very unique look to them. And props to Hasbro and Sakara for the initial designs because they have really brought the Transformers from my childhood into the 21st century and in turn captured a lot of new fans and have kind of rekindled this interaction between parent and child parents saying oh yes i had one like this and we do this 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 and pew, 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 pew. and there we have one happy parent and one extremely happy child thanks again to tf direct for making this review possible if you found it useful feel free to give it a big thumbs up share and of course subscribe and make sure you hit that notification bell when you subscribe to get notifications of when i upload more awesome content until next time from myself and the Weijang Robot Force oversized version of a brainstorm. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.